I'm here with Thomas Dale head football coach Kevin Tucker after the night's annual preseason scrimmage with the reigning state champion Holland Spring Springers who move up from Class 5 up to his region of Region A in Class 6. And coach, I know it's just an exhibition and they do keep score. It might not mean a whole lot, but what do you take out of coming out on top in this thing, 21 to 14? Certainly there's got to be some positives and pluses you can build off of from it. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, like, you know, Lauren and I talked after the game. Um, you know, our ones played pretty tough. Like I said, you know, we're, we're up there battling. The kids are flying around to the football. Um, I think both of us will agree we both need to get in better shape. Um, we have a lot more guys going both ways for both teams. And with those guys having to go both ways, you know, they got a little gas there. And like I said, you saw some sloppiness towards the end of the uh, second quarter. Um, I think I was most proud of today was our defense. Um, last year, that was a huge uh, question mark for us. You know, we were giving up, you know, 60 points to a team or giving up 35 to a team. And, you know, this defense, we challenged them this offseason. And, you know, every single day after workouts, they stayed after with Coach um, Humphrey and Coach Perk and Coach Bright and Coach PJ and, um, you know, Coach Gabe and, and Coach Whistler. And that side of the, the ball really has, has stepped up this offseason. And you saw the fruits of their labor out there with, you know, 11 hats flying to the football. Um, I told the kids after the game they, that they're getting close to earning the monkey or back called the dark zone. Yeah. Well, it's funny. I think coming in, we both probably felt that your defensive line and your secondary were, were strong points. Mm -hmm. Linebackers, you got to replace guys like Hicks, who's at Virginia Tech, mm -hmm. Malazzo is at Bridgewater. But you pretty much controlled their run game outside of a couple of big plays, which Highland Springs always gets. You just minimize them from having five or six of those to like yep. one or two, if you will. Yeah, and I think, you know, like I said, we both got to take into account that – uh Neither one of us ran our quarterbacks today. That was by design. Um, so that, that takes the, the pressure off the linebackers a little bit. They're having to account for 10 guys instead of 11. Um, but like I said, I'm looking forward to um, seeing this defense continue to grow. Um, the, the front four um, really played well today. The secondary played great. Um, but our linebackers, you know, like I said, they're getting better each week. You saw the second group go out there. Um, Michael Davis with a big interception for a touchdown. Um, you know, he's only a sophomore. Like I said, got, got a lot of years with him to come and – um, you know, Zachariah Sands, you know, like I said, he's out there with the first team, one of the few returning starters at linebacker we have. And like I said, he, he flew through the football today and made some great plays. And um, then we flipped over on offense and, and he had to carry the ball a little bit today as well. Yeah, we're going to need to see your youngsters, your underclassmen get enthused. Also your coaching staff still coaching hard to the final whistle there in the second half with the rain coming down. As you look at uh, the offensive side of the ball, Ethan Minter, UVA committed quarterback, hooked up with Nick Tyree for a big touchdown, the Delaware commit down the foot after the first three possessions, I think were pretty much scoreless for each side. Uh, you've got some depth at that receiver spot that showed today, about seven, eight guys that can really make plays at that spot. And uh, Minter, even though the quarterbacks weren't live per se, if you will, I thought he moved around the pocket pretty well to give him some more time to make throws down the field yeah you know um that's where ethan has, has always been for four years has been great for us being able to extend plays with his legs um and, and you'll notice like even today even though he wasn't live you know he, he's still trying to throw the ball sometimes holding it a little bit too long but for the most part like he's extending that plays and allowing our receivers to do a double move and get deep and like i said you know we got guys like nick tyree shamari earls jacob seaborn ethan graves you know the starting four but then you got the backups. Delwan Waller made some great catches today, and Delwan's going to be a you know one of the guys for the future. It's going to be really great, um, you know. And again, there's a number of guys that I'm not even mentioning, but you know, there's seven, eight deep at receiver that I think can flat out fly and play football. It can be a different guy every Friday night. It feels like for you, and Earls has got like it feels like big time potential just oozing with it. Running back was something you've had Chris Tyree, you've had Brandon Rose, you've had a bunch of studs if you will, over the years. Uh, even before you got here, with Vic Williams was coaching. That position, what did you see on the, the ground game in your offensive line against the Highland Springs defense with, with Brennan Johnson, at linebacker, who's a stud state player here, against that group? It felt like you had some moderate success at times moving the ball with the ground game. Yeah, so, you know, like I've gone back and, uh, and looked at some of my past running backs. You had Colin Holmes, Elijah Burns, and Chris Tyree in the backfield. We ran the wing tee. All three kids played college football. Two of them played Division One. One's at Notre Dame right now. Then you got follow that up with Brandon Rose and Jordan Branch. And Brandon Rose and Jordan Branch, both at Virginia State, running the football right now. So, you know, we've had five running backs. The last five running backs we've had out there on that field have all been college football players. So that was a huge question mark. Um, Braden Powell, he's tiny, but the little son of a gun does not go down easy. He was pushing up Powell. Um, you know, there were some times where I wish he would have put his foot in the ground and, and kind of cut up a little bit sooner. And then, like I said, Sands, man, he, he gets out there and he's a horse. Um, Jaden Height in the second half. You know, he's only a sophomore. Um, NJ Hines only a sophomore. NJ's out right now with an injury. But, you know, those two sophomore running backs, I, I've told people with those two guys, we're going to have a one two combination for the next three years that it's going to be formidable. And, um, like I said, the two seniors kind of got us going. And, you know, both of them play a lot of defense. So, 
these young guys, these sophomores have, have got to step up and, and make plays. Yeah, and Jaden showed that cutback ability. Last one, let you go. Uh, looking at your region and your schedule, uh, there's no days off, if you will. Region 6A with now Highland Springs coming up as a defending state champ. Oscar Smith won a state title. Western Branch won a region. Manchester won a state title. You guys have won a state title. It feels like it's as good a region as there is in the state, and the playoffs could just be buckle up, buckle up your chin strap and the seat belt, right? <laughs> Yeah, you know, you're, you're liable to see with our region, the number 16 win the region and go on to, to play in a state championship. We're that deep with this region. Um, you know, you got to also account for Glenn Allen, who's had two 10-0 JV teams the past two years and have been improving. Um, you know, last year they won a couple playoff games. Um, then, you, you again, you got Western Branch, you got Oscar Smith, you got Thomas Dale, you got Manchester, you got Highland Springs. Does that make you excited, nervous, maybe a little bit of both? No, man, you know me. I, I, like I said, every year I scrimmage Highland Springs. Sure. You know, I changed our schedule up this year. We had some teams drop us off, you know, and not want to play us anymore. We picked up Glenn Allen and Patrick Henry, two perennial playoff teams that are going to win a game or two in the playoffs. You look at our district schedule. You got Motoko is going to be one of the favorites in five. You got Denwoody is going to be a favorite in four. You know, we're not playing a slouch schedule. And in order to get ready for those guys, you got to play a tough schedule. That way, when you get to the playoffs, you're ready for Friday night. God willing, we just got to have – you know, we got to find a couple more linemen. We got seven linemen right now. We're going to go down to JV on Monday. We're going to find us two or three more so we can have enough to uh, rotate some guys around because those same five that are starting on offense are playing a lot on defense. Well, the uh, Central District is unforgiving and very competitive for sure. One of the best in the state as well. Uh, well, it'll be a lot of fun Friday nights with the Knights of Thomas Dale. Coach Kevin Tucker, thank you so much. All the best, and we'll see you soon. Yes, sir. Thank you guys for coming up today. Okay.